Are you prepared to diet for your country? Be smaller than you can be. I don't know if you, any of you remember, but about uh, a year ago, two years ago, 27% of kids were turned away because they're too fat to serve in the military. So the CDC has been collecting data on our obesity rates um, for at least the last 20 years. And it's pretty astounding at what a change we're just seeing in our lifetime. When I, I remember when I first started my residency, it was very rare to operate on somebody who was 200 pounds or over. And now, it's very rare to operate on somebody who's under 200 pounds. I mean, it's, it's, we've had to get all new you know, equipment in the OR, longer instruments, bigger beds, bigger wheelchairs. It's really astounding. So this will just this show, show you kind of graphically how we've changed in just 20 years. So 20 years. Keep in mind, our genes don't change that quickly. So back in 1992, we had most of the country had a 10 to 14 percent obesity rate, and we had a, Louisiana and Mississippi are usually the first states to become the next category of obese, but they were 15 to 19 percent. Colorado's typically been one of the healthiest states. A lot of athletes live there, and they've been slow to become obese, but now they are. So that's what happened three years later. Half the country has this 15 to 19 percent. Ten years later, we have a whole new, actually two whole new categories, the 25 to 29 percent in this Bible Belt and 30 percent in Louisiana, Mississippi, and West Virginia. So typically the, the, among the, the poorer states, they're getting poor quality food. But it happens to be the, the, the most inexpensive food, too, thanks to our um, tax dollars at work. So there's 2010. We don't have any more. Any more states that are in this 10 to 14 percent, no more states in this 15 to 19 percent. Every, every state in the country is over 20 percent rate of obesity now. So, you know, how does that happen in just our lifetime, in 20 years? It can't be your genes because your genes do not change this quickly. It's got to be the environment. And what's changed in our environment? Our food has changed. Mm -hmm. We're eating different kinds of food than we used to eat. And the food itself has also changed, as we don't. High fructose corn syrup came on the market in 1975, and we have genetically modified food that came on the market in 1994. And then we're just eating ever-increasing amounts of sugar. So when you're obese, it's an inflamed state. So when you're, when you're obese, you have increased ele ele uh, levels of cytokines and hormones that create a background that is favorable to development of chronic disease, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, asthma, or depression, any of them. So that's where we've been and where we're going. Probably in the back, you're not going to be able to see this, but this blue bar represents the time that we know that we have walked as bipedal hominids on Earth. So two and a half million years, at least, that we've been, been here and evolving. This little bar represents 10,000 years. That's the time that we've had farming. So most of the time during our evolution, we had a hunter-gatherer type of diet. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, and berries, and healthy sources of meat. Because most of the time we've been here, we had meat that was eating its own natural diet, eating grass out in the wild, etc. cetera. Um, but we didn't have the grains that we have now. And consider that it's very standard now to have wheat, often more than once a day, pretty much every day. It did not used to be a part of our regular diet. It, wheat is basically a grass. So grains a very recent addition to our diet. Typically with a hunter-gatherer diet, they were mostly eating vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, berries. And then when they could, they had these healthy sources of meat. And when they had those sources of meat, they ate everything. So they had actually a much higher fat diet than what we have. They did not have persistent organic pollutants. They didn't have any altered foods in the sense of hydrogenated oils, or uh, processed foods, refined grains, refined, um, they didn't have any pasteurized, homogenized milk either. And certainly they didn't have any genetically modified food either. 
the standard American diet now has 150 pounds of sugar a year, 200 pounds of flour, again, a very recent addition to our diet, 365 cans of soda on average. There are definitely some people who do more, and certainly some of us who do less than that. Uh, 564 pounds of dairy. Now, dairy also is a fairly recent addition to our diet. The medical anthropologists think that we've had it for about 4,000 years at least. They found shards of pottery in England that had traces of dairy on them. But most of the time, that was dairy from the family cow that was fed on grass and out in the pasture. It was uh, not pasteurized milk. It wasn't homogenized milk. It um, was not milk from cows that were fed grain, milk from cows fed grass. Then we were adding our five pounds of additives and gallon of pesticides. So these are pure and outright chemicals that for the most part weren't around before 1900. So these are molecules that our body hasn't adapted to, to living with, really. And remember that our body has a finite number of responses, of which inflammation is one of the biggest, to this infinite number of insults. So the standard American diet, this, this would be, this is unfortunately what the physicians feed themselves at our quarterly staff meetings. We do have some token fruit there, but nobody's eating it. <laughs> so I mentioned sugar. Again, is sugar, um, for the most of our time on Earth, we had t approximately 20 teaspoons of sugar a year in the form of vegetables, fruits, and berries. And now the average teen is getting 32 teaspoons of sugar a day. I mean, you can go out and get that many teaspoons in a big gulp in one day. And I, I have a lot of people ask me about you know, eating Raisin Bran, thinking that it's going to be a healthy form of cereal, that you're going to get your bran that way. Um, unfortunately, Raisin Bran has 19, 19 grams of sugar per serving. And the serving sizes aren't that big. The other thing about all these cereals is that they're grains. They've been often uh, they're genetically modified. If it comes in a box and it doesn't say it's not GMO, I would assume it's GMO, meaning modified. Um, but the other thing about the grains is they have a very high glycemic index. So they're going to get digested and absorbed slow, uh, very quickly. Your blood sugar goes up quickly. As a result, your insulin goes up. And insulin, when you mix it in the lab with cancer cells, it makes them grow. So you want to you wanna avoid that high peaking blood sugar and high levels of insulin. And then of course you particularly want to skip the sodas. Yes, sir. How did we get so much sugar in our food, in our canned food and in our cereal food? Where were the doctors, where were the nutritionists, where were the dietitians? I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you that most doctors only get one hour of nutrition, if that, in medical schools. Um, and I, I just think we don't, as, I mean, as doctors, I just don't think, you, you saw what we serve ourselves at our meetings, and as far as I know, I've been the only person who's suggested we do something else. But, but uh, it's, it's a sorry state of affairs. And, and now, of course, you have all the politics involved. Well, I understand that eventually it's going to go down. The manufacturers will probably do what is, uh, what is best. I think, I think we have to vote with our fork and vote with your pocketbook. Buy foods that are healthy for you. Spread the word. And they'll hit them where it hurts in their wallet. <clears throat> well, just to respond to that, I, you know, Mayor Bloomberg is pretty progressive. But I think this new thing that he came out with, you know, uh, he said he was trying to stimulate conversation on no more, was it 16 ounces? No more cold drinks larger than 16 ounces to start the conversation. I found it interesting, though, that he didn't do a thing with uh, Starbucks, uh, coffees, fruits, sugars, uh, sticky buns, and it's still more expensive, way more expensive, to buy healthy because of the supplements to the farmers and that grow the corn for the corn, not Sarah, right. but corn, right. um, whatever the corn. High fructose corn syrup. Corn, yeah. But 
you know, the way I the way I explain it to patients in terms of the the cost is you're making an you're making an investment in your health, and if you you save one day of one hospitalization, well, if you save if you save one hospitalization, you've paid for the increased cost of that food from the get-go, and and not to mention you generally feel better. So a lot a, a, a question I get a lot about, uh, in fact, I got it this morning was. Well, how about sucralose or Splenda or Equal? And in truth, those have not ever been proven to help you lose weight. And they don't stimulate your leptin receptors in your brain saying you're full. So when you eat things that contain these artificial sweeteners, which uh, again point out they're relatively new molecules, only been around for the last 50 years, they, they don't they don't help you to lose weight. They don't, they don't uh, because they're not stimulating your leptin receptors in your brain, you end up eating more. And this was an experiment done with rats where they had one group that got the yogurt sweetened with regular sugar and from cane sugar, and one got yogurt sweetened with saccharin. The group that got the yogurt sweetened with saccharin actually ate more. And they actually gained twice as much weight as the other group eating the yogurt. regular yogurt. I had a patient one time who was drinking 12, uh, 12 diet sodas a day. She stopped and she lost 15 pounds. I mean, it just kind of came right off. So I, um, I'm very hesitant about including anything in your diet that, that has not had millennia of experience with our genes. All right, so foods absent in the Paleolithic diet. 70% of what we're eating now, 70% of our calories, were not foods that we evolved eating. So 70% of our calories are coming from dairy, cereal grains, refined sugars, and refined vegetable oils. So typically, I'll tell my patients, and you can sing along with me if you want, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, berries, and healthy sources of meat. So when Weston Price went around the world and, and looked at all these different populations where he found the same thing in and out, he uh, realized that none of these populations were eating refined foods. No refined sugar, no refined grain. None of them were having uh, refined vegetable oils. They all had equal amounts of omega-6 and omega-3 fats in their diet, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute and they were eating nutrient-dense diets, so lots of nutrients. They typically had uh, four times the amount of minerals and 10 to 12 times the amount of uh, water-soluble vitamins than what we're, we get in our diet now. They had a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s, whereas now we have one omega-3, which reduces inflammation, to 15 to 20 omega-6s, which promote inflammation. Yes? How do, we, how do I know how to measure my omega-6s? How do you know how to measure your omega-6s? So well, you, most people get way too many omega-6s in today's world. Uh, omega, <laughs> so omega-6s would be in vegetable oils, nuts, um, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and omega-3s are in things like avocados, flax, walnuts, hemp, chia, I'm sorry? And fish, yes. And so it's particularly the deep water cold fish like salmon, cod, mackerel, halibut, and sardines. So there are, there are tests that you can do to see where you are in terms of what's in your cell membranes. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the omega-3s and omega-6s in a minute. Right now, actually. <laughs> so we're going to talk about fats. And as I, I mentioned, you know, last, in, the, in the last century, we kind of got onto this hype about low-fat diets. And then uh, it didn't really pan out in terms of reducing heart disease. Um, and when we look back at Paleolithic diets, they actually had more fat than what we are eating now. The thing about fats is they um, make up your cell membranes. And they control how your cells communicate one to another. 
If you have a diet that's more heavy in omega-3s, your cells are going to be more fluid. If you have a diet that's high in saturated fats, they're going to be more rigid. So saturated fats would be things in like meat, um, butter, um, coconut oil. If you have foods that are high in trans fats, which are going to be things like french fries, um, processed foods, things that are baked, trans fats get into your cell membranes and they stay there forever. And they tend to be real crooked molecules that distort the, the cell membrane. So, so you, typically there are all kinds of receptors and lipid rafts that are floating along in this membrane. And the membrane quality is going to change how well those receptors work. So say your insulin receptors or your serotonin receptors if you happen to be depressed. You want, you want those membranes to be as healthy as as you can get them, and omega-3s will help. Yes, sir? Do the trans fats stay in the cell membrane? Is, is the reason <laughs> you don't have enzymes to break that down, or, or what is the reason for that? I don't, I don't, I don't know why they, they stay there. They tend to be very stable molecules, and that's why, I mean, that's why they were created in the first place by a, a chemist to make fats have a longer shelf life. So you have something like Crisco that's got a shelf life of 110 years, just stays there forever. Um, and it, it, it really interferes with the quality of the membranes and how the receptors in that membrane work. But I don't know if, you know, but it, it may be that we don't have enzymes to deal with them because they are recent additions to our diet. They, they, well, there's, there's limited trans fats in nature, but in the foods that we have, it was a chemical process created in the early 1900s. So again, fairly, fairly recent in terms of our evolution. Now, trans fats are particularly bad, and you want to you wanna stay away from them with a 10-foot pole. A 2% increase in your, in your trans fats leads to a 25% increase in heart disease. And they just have no redeeming quality to them.